I guess uh, we saved the best for last. But uh, before I start, I just wanted to thank all you guys for taking time out of your schedule to be here. Um, and the, I, my group is Cerebrum. So what I think is you got to be more than average nowadays. You can't just show up to class. You can't just, that's not enough. You got to think about the future. What's going to be the future? You got to always be in front of the next person. So that's what Cerebrum is. Okay, so I want you guys to think about an experience you had at a restaurant that was negative. Whether, you know, you go up to the host stand, the host says, hey, it's a five to ten minute wait. You go back to your wife, your husband, your kids, whoever you're with. And you say, do you really think it's going to be five to ten minutes? The host calls you like two minutes later sometimes. Sometimes it is accurate, other times it's 30 minutes. Either way, there, I feel like you generally have some skeptability. You know, there is no, there's no way for them to record an accurate wait time. There's no organization. It's, padded, it's a pad of paper. Just what I have in front of it. So, that is now going to affect your experience. It's now going to affect the employees. So, basically, what Cerebrum does is it's going to be able to organize all of that and create basically a nucleus. So, everything will work together. And these are just some pictures of bad experiences. So this is um, a video I made. Uh, it's actually made by Grace Patton. And this is just a quick synopsis I wanted to show. That kind of explains it. Cerebrum is a highly advanced interface and operating system that allows restaurants and customers to connect more and improve overall customer experience. In many mid-scale and high-volume restaurants, controlling the flow of the customers can be difficult. Often poor hosting abilities lead to long wait lines and chaos in the dining room. Cerebrum is a way to help with all this. Cerebrum has three main components, Exarchitis, Cerebus, and Rex. Exarchitis helps hosts by displaying recommended tables for a guest on a simplified map of the restaurant, and also the current average wait time calculated through a special algorithm. Cerebus lets busters and servers know when guests have sat down at their table, and when they have left through the use of wireless pressurized devices located underneath each seat. Rex allows managers to keep track in real time of the flow of every activity going on in the dining room. Cerebrum adds tremendous value to any restaurant by helping to control every aspect of the front of house and making running the restaurant more efficient and simple. Cerebrum can be accessed on any computer, tablet, or smartphone device. Cerebrum is the future of the restaurant industry, and we hope you think so too. And that is all. So that kind of just, instead of me explaining it to you and you looking at me like completely confused, I think that video sums it up perfectly, what Cerebrum does um, and why it is the future of the hospitality industry. I don't know if any of you guys have gone out to eat and already seen a host with an iPad. Um, they can
can see the tables and everything. What they don't have is it's not connecting to the servers, it's not connecting to the busers, and it's not going to connect to the kitchen either. So this will do all of that. Um, so just some values uh, that Cerebrum brings. It's going to maximize your efficiency. You're going to be able to have a more calculated average wait time using a probability statistic, which I can explain to you. Um, so you basically would say, how long on average does it take for a one top to sit? How long does it take for a two top to sit? How long does it take for a three top to sit? How long is it? And so forth. And through probability, you can actually create a formula on an iPad that the host would have that would create a more accurate wait time. It would control all of the, the, the guests that have checked in. They, instead of saying, oh, I think it's going to be 5 to 15 minutes. Now you can say, hey, Cerebrum is letting me know it's probably going to be around 5 to 7 minutes. Um, we have X, Y, and Z. Uh, as the video showed you again, the busers can know they can stay in the back and then the pressurized seats, just like an airbag in your car, keep the guests get up. Busters come out, whether they're doing roll-ups, whether they're helping the prep cooks, it's all about multitasking. It's all about being efficient. That's what managers want in these fast, casual restaurants. So it's all that all Cerebrum is doing is making your job easier. You don't the, the, the employee doesn't need to think. Cerebrum is doing it for you. Just to quickly explain each one because it is a little confusing by the names, they're Latin terms. Uh, Exarchitis is uh, a Latin term for host, so that would be up at the host stand. So the host would have a iPad, so it would have the, all the tables to tell you what's open, what's not open, um, based on the pressurized seats, just like an airbag in the car. They would have an average wait time, just like I explained to you, using uh, an average probability. The server, huge problem. Server, you go up to the table, the server has to take your order, and then they have to go to a centralized terminal just like this, where there's about five other people, they're all rushing, hey, I need to, you know, please quickly hurry up, I need to use this. You have, now you have a phone with servers on it. This is all part of server room. Put the order in, go straight to the kitchen. That's gonna save you at least two more, five more minutes. Boom, 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 increasing speed, increasing efficiency, increasing profit. REX stands for, in Latin, management leader. Um, manager gets to sit in his office if he wants to be lazy. We know a lot of managers are these days. Uh, he can analyze all the data. He can tell the, what the host is doing. He can see what the wait list is. He can see what each table has ordered. He can analyze all that data and through that can actually better forecast every single day in the future, whether it's staffing, whether it's ordering food, whether it is training, whatever it comes down to. It's in a collection of data that will be continuously be organized and tracked throughout the year. So why would you invest in this? This is just a quick graph. Um, I, I lowballed this, so I set an average check uh, per person, per, per cover is $12. This is, would be at a casual place, California Pizza Kitchen, Olive Garden, Chili's, Applebee's. So the bottom on the X says the number of seats, not the number of tables, the number of seats. Bar on the Y is the revenue. Let's just say you get one more turn per week. Just one more turn, that's all I'm asking for you guys. That's what Cerebrum is gonna do, get you one more turn a week. You have 50 seats, <clears throat> you can see, on a $12 average cover, if you get one more turn a week, you've now generated a total of $31,000 in profit per restaurant per year, <coughs> additionally, on top of everything else. Let's say you have 80 seats. Boom, that's well over $45,000 on top of everything. You're controlling, while controlling costs. This is additional revenue. I'm not saying this is profit, this is revenue. 
Cerebrum solves the problem. Okay, I guess I have to stop really quickly. It would increase your brain loyalty and it would decrease employee turnover by better organizing your systems. It makes the world a better place. That collection would decrease food waste. Managers would be able to control what they're ordering by being able to track it. And Cerebrum, next product to every restaurant will have in the future, I can guarantee you. 110% I can guarantee you in a year, every single restaurant you walk into will have this. Whether it is called Cerebrum or something else. Okay, thanks Ryan. We should stop there. Let me turn it over to the judges. How did you come up with that name? Cerebrum? Yeah. Uh, cerebrum is a Latin term for brain and I thought that the point of the word, sorry, the, uh, the whole point is a nucleus, a brain. The brain connects to your whole body. It controls everything. It organizes everything. That's what I wanted Cerebrum to be. I wanted it to be a software that can organize everything, that controls all aspects of the restaurant to make it efficient and to decrease the main problems, turnover, food cost, the, um, examples like that. Well, but it's, I mean, fairness, I mean, it's going to be to, you know, the uh, organization, I guess, of the guests and their meals, not, doesn't get into the kitchen or cooking or preparing or any of that, correct? Um, in, in what way? Can you elaborate well, on I'm the just, part of the kitchen? You just said that it was, you, your derivation of the name comes from the Latin term mm -hmm. for brain and brain controlling everything, and I'm just... You say everything, I'm thinking of kitchen, every correct. aspect of the restaurant, which would include the kitchen. I didn't see that as part of it. That's correct. Part. That would be the hardest part. There's no humanly way possible to cook food faster unless, yeah. you know, you're in a crop and you design the flat or everything. So, uh, but it actually does connect to the back of the house because instead of having to use a centralized terminal like a computer, you're using your phone. So it actually increased the time the kitchen would. Right. So, but if I understand correctly, yep. your premise is that you're going to increase turns, which could theoretically increase profitability. But how do you know that you know even having adding this kind of technology to a restaurant is going to somehow incite the customer to you know leave earlier? I mean, in other words, if the customer is done, you know, some people just sit there and have another drink or coffee, what have you? Or, you know, I, I don't. I don't see how the technology necessarily makes, provides for that level of, of efficiency. Um, well, one, it would add an extremely, extremely competitive advantage to every other restaurant. Um, in my opinion, uh, you install the software and the next restaurant says, wow, they're making 30 extra grand a year. We got to jump on this. Uh, the value it's adding to the customer, again, why you're saying they'd want to come there. Maybe they are sitting for an hour, but this is for fa a fast casual chain, or even if it isn't and they are sitting there for an hour, there's other people who genuinely go out to eat. I, again, I told you based off of statistics and probability, it will make your restaurant more efficient, more profitable. It's something that attracts guests. They'll see an iPad, they'll see this technology, they'll be like, wow, this is different, this is unique, this is cool. Differentiation is what makes product successful. Okay. So, so the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So the just to clarify, mm -hmm. so, you're, so you're kind of targeting the fast casual Correct. restaurant chain segment. Then. Correct. Yes. Do you know offhand how many seats that would be like? Correct. Yeah, I did do a little research on okay. that uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit. They franchise. I, I, you can franchise or not. They have about 50 seats, so that's why I started with 50 seats. Okay, so would this be targeted to like the 50 to 75 seat? Yes. Yeah. It could go. It could, it could go from either five seats all the way up to 500. It's a, it, the software has an algorithm and a formula that will connect with anything. It's just like your iPhone. You get a text message. It connects everything. It's it's all wirelessly connected through um, a centralized unit, basically. Okay, it doesn't so matter how big or small the restaurant is. 
there's no there's no limit to survey bro. Okay. So so part of the problem I have with this is there are existing systems that do all of the functions you're talking about. And tablets uh, at the table side for the servers is not unknown. The Correct. biggest threshold and the reason most restaurants don't have them right now is cost. Correct. And so, uh, I mean, there's a product I know that's out of, I think it's out of Cambridge Mass, called Toast. And it essentially does exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Now, it may not connect to uh, the host end necessarily, but I'm also a little skeptical of the whole sensors and seats, because what if I get up to go to the bathroom? Correct. What you could do is you would place a centralized unit, again, like five, four or five dollars underneath the table, and it would have like a 15 to 30 second respond. Where if you went up to get to the go to the bathroom, it, I'm sure you would come back after a certain number of seconds or something, and it would reset it basically. Well, but now it would have like a neutral reset button. But now for the entry, cost of entry for me, I've got to buy tablets, right? I've got to buy a tablet for the hostess thing. I've got to buy sensors for all the chairs in the, in the restaurant. Correct. And then the other question is, how often do you have to replace the sensors? Well, it would be like an airbag in a car. So you would never replace a sensor for your airbag in your car, I'm assuming. Well, that's not entirely that's true, true, actually. But. Okay, so let me just give you an example about why that why, I'm not saying you're wrong, but why it actually is profitable. So just like you're saying, you need to buy tablets and you need to buy sensors. So a sensor can't, I looked it up, cost between five to $10 a tablet, maybe what, $500 at most. That's just one, that's it. That's all you need, that's all you're paying. Well no, because now I have to buy the software from you. Correct. I have to replace be... the tablet every two weeks because the servers drop it. Well, no, 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 no. The, the tablet is centralized at the host stand. The server would have an app that they could use on their Android phone or their smartphone. They would just be using their own phone. There's, you wouldn't be buying like 600 iPhones. The only cost you're enduring is two, like two centralized Whatever you want to call it, smart devices. All right, so, so there's a problem with that as well. And the reason is this. First of all, if somebody's using their personal property for the actual service process, I think the Department of Labor gets involved, and that's a huge problem for restaurants. Uh, the second part is the tablets that are coming out now that are used, being used table side. Um, the purpose for the table side is to comply with the whole credit card, chip cards, credit cards. So now if I'm using, as a server, I'm using my own phone, um, I'm pretty sure that no business is going to want uh, the individual service to be processing credit card payments through their individual phone. If that makes sense. So, so I think you, you I, I don't know that that works. Businesses are not going to be comfortable with that. Um, it's, I mean, it's the same argument that you could make that you have an app on your phone and you put your credit card into that. It's. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about complying with the, with the legal structure that... No, no, I know, but I'm, your argument would be that they wouldn't feel comfortable giving their credit card to someone's phone. That Correct. data is easily transmittable no matter what. There would be an application within the phone that would just want to ensure security. And two, the tablets are going to be centralized, so the costs are down here and your potential revenue is like all the way up here. So basically. if I work for you, I have to own a phone and I have to load on, because now I'm a server and I'm working for you. And now it's required. I mean, part of the hospitality industry, my people who talk about it, getting kids off the phone while they're working is probably one of the biggest discussions. Like, they're right. not allowed to use their personal phone because now a text comes in from the girlfriend in the middle of observing that someone Cor is... Correct. I don't think that it necessarily matters what industry you're in. I think technology is distracting. For instance, Mike, um, you have your phone sitting out right there. I know it's face down. I know you're not using it. I just think technology is the future. You don't... You know, you gotta take advantage of that. You know, you can set limits with a phone. You don't have to, you know. It, there's a difference between using this application and blatantly seeing some person standing in the corner and texting on their phone. All this, all the Cerebrum is doing is maximizing your efficiency. 
so I'll go back to the Department of Labor one because that's going to be a huge problem. Well, I know, for instance, so, so, in Somerville, Massachusetts, they already had a host pad, like just like what you were talking sure. about. But that's owned by the restaurant. That's not like your phone. And my, my problem with the phones, like for the individual service, is this. Um, under the Department of Labor rules, if you require them to use something of their own for the, business, for the actual business purposes, you have, to re, uh, you have to compensate them for that use of or for the product itself. For example, you can't require somebody to wear a black shirt with a logo on it that's your logo because it's not something they would use outside of the, it has to be specifically for the business. It creates a whole host of problems on the HR side of things. Okay. Um, so, what would be the difference between that and, are you familiar with Uber? Sure. Uh, that's basically the same thing. That, right. That but you're using it for personal use. You're not using it for a third party business you work for. Well, the person, the driver downloads the app and they're, you know what I mean? Like they would be the same. Interestingly, idea. there was actually just a class action lawsuit settled on behalf of Uber that uh, there were Uber drivers in California and somewhere else that just sued Uber for some ungodly amount of money. It was settled out of court for about $100 million. For that reason. They announced it yesterday? Yeah, yeah. It was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Because of who, uh, because essentially Uber had control over when and where they worked, so therefore they weren't independent contractors, mm -hmm. and they made the claim that they should be employees getting full compensation. Right. So, so my point is, when you get into, technology is great, well, I think we're fully supportive of the technology, yeah. but when you bridge the gap between personal technology and commercial technology, you create a whole host of issues, and it's honestly, uh, it's one of those spaces where there's not a lot of case law and there's not a lot of litigation that's happened yet, but I, Bet your shoes is coming. Right. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I think there's also ways to definitely bounce around those laws a hundred percent. Yeah, but that's where uh, hundred million dollar settlements come from. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to bounce around too much. But I would, I would make yeah. the same argument though that any successful company has had a hundred million dollar settlement, no matter where you want to put it. <laughs> So, I mean, like, you can take all the negatives you want and all the pros you want, but when it comes down to, in the end, in my opinion, the pros are just massively outweighing the cons. You can take all these the theoretical, hypothetical situations. There's just continuously ways to work around it and ensure that it's actually an effective product. And all, you know, that's the way I feel personally. You got to start somewhere. I, I'm passionate about my idea. I'm ambitious about it. So if something like that was to happen, then I would find a lawyer, find some way to get around it. You know. So you need to add a line item for legal fees. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's again another hypothetical question you're right. asking. But yeah, I guess so. Every so the I, whole premise, Brian. So I was very clear. I was a little confused too about the inner workings of each part. Yeah. You know, um, is the is your whole idea about um, the sensors? Is that your is that the core business model? Is the use of these sensors? Um, because there, there are the point of sale systems that exist. You know, in you know, open data or whatever, they have a tremendous amount of ability or capability to to do exactly what you you're doing. So as and I own part of a restaurant, so I know this. It, your thing would be, it, it, it wouldn't be a compliment, it would just be, it would be just half of something that I need, but the other half I already have. Mm -hmm. So why would I get rid of one, you know, the thing that, I, that most of the, or saying, most restaurants use versus totally replacing it with your system? So you're saying, that's, that's going to be the challenge. So you're saying, why would you get rid of, why would you want Cerebrum because an open table exists? No, it's well, but it's just part of something. There's a system called Aloha. That's the point of sale systems that most restaurants use, and they do a lot of analysis. And you know, they have algorithms too, saying wrap wait time today is X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and they have to have that. Now you're offering something additional. I, I get that, but a restaurant's not going to take their existing system and just say, eh, "We're going to leave it. We're going to take Ryan's system and totally replace the system that's been in play for you know the last 15 years." And they keep upgrading your software, right. software, I mean. The law is tracking food, too. Yeah, they are actually yeah. tracking food well, costs and things. And, right, yeah. right. And that 
But that, any point of sale system, this is just one branded one that we're talking about, tracks a lot of this information. Yeah, and, and the main terminals with the user yeah. are where they're host standing. And, mm -hmm. they, and they have all their, they have lights too. This is this table's taken, this table's not taken, and you know, they, it, it's there. So I that's why I, I'm looking at what you're presenting is more of a complement to maybe existing systems than a replacement. Well, yeah, and you can build off that as well. I mean, you could add other features to it that would cause different. And we use iPads each, we have like seven, eight iPads, and each iPad has a, a swiper on it, right? Or, or a chip thing. So each, like, if you find the weight on you, I put it in. And then, you know, at the end, and did, like, another server would use it or whatever. And then when you're ready to pay, it's all on the same system. So it's okay, you know, Mr. Spear is built. Yeah. Here it is. And then you just sign with your finger. You have the ability to put in um, the tip. Everything hit yes yeah. with your finger. Boom, done. Yeah. And it prints out a little receipt off you. Or we email it to you. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we use an iPad. Yeah. Um, I know you're, still with, like, you're still 500 pieces. Yeah. I know Chili's does the same exact thing. The difference is that, like, iPads are... Where, like a phone. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think we're out of time. Thank Absolutely. you very much.